The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome to this special transfer deadline day transfer talk show. I'm your host, Jonathan Secker, and I'm joined by Andy Watson. We're recording and coming to you uh, on the breaking news that Rovers have signed Ryan Giles on loan from Wolverhampton Wanderers. So we're going to have a quick chat about that. Got some really interesting data to show you and, um, yeah, really show how this could be a good positive signing for Rovers. Uh, before we go on, just the, the usual mentions to our sponsors, um, Six Yard Out and Blue Rose Capital and to our chosen charity of the year, Sporting Memories. There's going to be loads of video, loads of content out from, from Rovers Chat both today and over the next few days, so please make sure that you do press the subscribe button. So, yeah, as we said, Rovers have concluded the loan transfer of Ryan Giles from Wolverhampton Wanderers, a 22-year-old who spent the first half of the season on loan at Cardiff. He's had a number of loan spells, out from Wolves over the last two or three seasons, Shrewsbury, Coventry, Rotherham last season, and then Cardiff for the first half of this season. Uh, 21 games for Cardiff this season, and at the point, nine assists, which I believe was a, a league high, and uh, even more credit knowing how much Cardiff have struggled this year. Changing their manager, had a run of, I believe, seven or eight defeats on the trot before Mark McCarthy was sacked. Um, class as a midfielder. Often plays as a wing back. I think he spent a lot of time at left wing back at Cardiff. Um, for me, really exciting sign in. I think um, not knowing at this point when we're recording what the what the, the situation was is with the Eden injury, then I think that adds a, another dimension, another bit of cover there for us, and uh, a left footer on that side. Which from after we saw on Saturday having Deo and JRC playing on that side, you don't always have the same balance. So, Andy, thanks for joining us. Um, I know you've got some great data for us to have a look at Ryan uh, about Ryan Giles, but what's your overarching sort of like view on the signing? Yeah, I think you can see kind of in those loan signings his progression. And you can see why um, he's an interesting signing for us. I think he's ready to kind of compete at the very top of the championship, and it will probably be his last loan before Wolves decide whether to kind of put him into their first team squad or or to sell him. Either way, they'll be able to get a good deal out of him. Um, you know, if they decide to sell him and he's proved himself at the very top of the championship, he's going to be quite a valuable asset. So it's a good move for Wolves. It's a good move for Ryan because he's getting more first-team football. And like I say, he's going to be battling for promotion from this league now. So um, really interesting. I think we've got the ideal kind of space for him there. As we know, we, we don't know Eden's, um, what, what the extent of that injury was. Um, but either way, I think... I think he was actually signed primarily as a central midfielder. Um, that's where he started playing for us when when uh, Pickering was still in the side. And obviously Harry's going to be coming back in the next few weeks as well. So um, I think it's going to be an interesting one to see if they can even use Ryan a bit higher up. And we'll talk a little bit about how he profiles as a player. Um, but yeah, in general, like a really exciting signing. I think everyone that I ever speak to about Ryan Giles um, within the recruitment or scouting or data community always speaks highly of him and is an exciting talent so yeah one that i'm really glad that we've got over the line and um, adds a lot to our squad i think yeah absolutely and i think just to, just to pick up on the point you mentioned about him being ready for this sort of um top level championship um move i think it's also from from a thought i have on it is not just him but the other loan signings we've got with Kadra and van heck that the sort of progression trajectory you see with these loan signings. They have like a good championship loan and then they have like a, a, a Premier League loan sometimes. And if we do get promoted, we're hopefully in pole position to to be maybe even them back next season. Maybe wishful yeah. thinking at this moment, but <laughs> I'm glad that you're thinking that way. That's really good. Like, I, was, I mean, you know, there's no let's not beat around the bush. Like we are gonna be in that either top six or hopefully um, you know, still we're still battling for automatic promotion so we need more bodies in there because we saw what happened on saturday when 
you know, we were already quite short going down to Luton and then we have injuries during the game and we end up with a real like kind of ragtag team. So today's really important and to get one over the line early, as we have done with, with Ryan Giles, um, you know, is a good start really. And you know, let's, we're recording this obviously, you know, not the end of deadline day. So we're still hoping for more, but yeah, to get to get bodies on the line and quality ones as well, like Ryan, um, is is definitely something that we need. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 how it also works on transfer deadline. Lots of the, the rumours, obviously, it's all coming out quite early, so it gives the media team plenty of time to do the fifty million photos they have to do before they can officially announce it, doesn't it? And so, yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. you want to bring up the data you got, then I'm, I'm really yeah. interested. Yeah, so that's to see and share this. You mentioned as well, it's classified as a, as a wide midfielder, really. So what, um, so what I did on Y Scout, so I've got this role scouting system. Um, I know that's going to be quite difficult to read on the video, but that little blue dot up there is Ryan. Um, he's classed as... So I've used this as dribbling winger versus defensive winger. Um, and basically anywhere up in the right hand side here is someone who can do who does both very well. So Jaden Anthony of Bournemouth is, is one that's up there. Callum Britton of Barnsley, who's someone who, you know, I think a lot of us were very impressed by when, when Barnsley came to Ewood. Um, but Ryan's more on the attacking side, although he can do a little bit of the defensive stuff as well. But he's up there alongside, like, Naskins Gabano. So the higher he is up the top of this graph, the more he suits that dribbling winger style. So himself, Cabano, um, Jen Nathan, Ivan Cavallero, Sober Thomas is there, Josh Tyman's there, and Ethan Laird as well. So you're getting the type of, you're getting the idea of the type of player that he is from his data from that. And then if we actually just go to his data itself, um, he's actually ranked second in the whole of the championship on his performances this season as a dribbling winger. Um, his penalty area entries for a wing back as well. Remember, he was playing wing back, not like Cabano is as a as a wide forward. Um, it's still really high. His dribbling is is very. He does a lot of dribbles, but they're also of decent quality. And his decisions off the ball, interestingly, is very good. These scores are compared to his peers, so um, they basically scored out of between zero and one. Um, anything over. You know, 0 0.6 is good. Anything over 0 0.7 is very good. So um, just to give you a general idea. Yeah, I, I think it... just, to, just to add a comment there, Andy, that's yeah. really interesting data. I think the thing that sticks out for me is if you look, if you were to ask like a, a general um, championship fan, someone who, who watches a lot of championship football about sort of like wide players and who's done well this season, the names like Cabano, Anthony, Wilson, Bowler, Sorba Thomas, Gibbs White, even Semenya at Bristol City would be really sort of like one of the first ones off your on, on your lips, really. So to see him well embedded within that company is very encouraging. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, the, the names around him are very good ones. And that's this is sorted for dribbling winger. He isn't quite as high on um, as a wide midfielder or a defensive winger or a wide playmaker even. This is someone who is, you know, I think very much a, a dribbler and a wide player and a, a deliverer of... Of, of balls into the box which you know i've just brought up some specific data points here things that he's good at and things that he's not so good at so he's actually ranked as the best in the championship like overall for shot assists which is really encouraging for some for a team that's starting to struggle really getting shots off and um, you mentioned about his assists that's backed up by his expected assists as well second best in the in the in the competition and also passes into the penalty area. So all of these attacking kind of things here are very strong for him. Um, he receives a lot of long passes, or he did at Cardiff. But, of course, under Mick McCarthy, Cardiff played a lot of long passes, um, a lot of crosses as well. But things that he's not so hot on, his defensive dual score is, is horrendous, really. So that's going to be interesting if we are relying on him to shore up that left side. He's, I'm not, not sure he's going to be one that's going to be able to do that. Also has a very low accurate forward passes score, which if you've seen any of the data that sometimes are put out after the match, our uh, pass accuracy is usually really poor. It's one of the worst in the league, but that's kind of the way that we play, isn't it? Mm -hmm. the moment we play, try and play very quickly through the lines and spring on the counter-attack, which means risky passes forward. So it seems like he's one in that mould where he can play forward quickly, but not accurately, um, but he does create chances. Yes, yeah, so so, with, with the defensive duels, then does that that stat mean that he someone will get past him a lot? 
in cross or so that defensive duels metric is made up of uh, mainly defensive duel success 65 percent and 35 percent of it is the number of duels that he gets involved in so it either means i haven't got the i might have the spreadsheet down here to have a look actually but um he doesn't get involved in that many duels and also he's not very good in them so um it's like the opposite of ryan iambi if you like um uh, so yeah. who, who wins a lot of one-on-one defensive duels but you know it's one of those you've got scott wharton um, just in behind him if he's playing left wing back it might be a case that you kind of shift that back five so it's more of a four and a half if you know what i mean so yeah, yeah, yeah. he plays a lot deeper and, and giles is pushed on further and allow um, scott Ward to cover a little bit more of that side so it's just a and probably a minor tactical tweak that's required but it might be worth it to get the extra impetus moving forward because so i think we've got the balance slightly wrong not wrong because he's it's, it's getting his results but we're, we're definitely more defensively minded at the moment than we are uh, attacking and it's showing in our data and in our performances to be fair yeah yeah then i think also if you if you looked at the normal back five and you'd always feel that there'd be more come from the left um assistant output wise from pickering than than ryan on the right wouldn't you yeah definitely so at least that kind of pattern of play would remain and it's something that we're familiar with but we definitely get more out of ryan giles in terms of dribbling and, and kind of speed down that side than harry pickering who's obviously got a very technical game and it is excellent in, in, when we're getting forward but he's not one that will carry us there he's one that will kind of arrive there and and be able to produce quality and that's what kind of makes me think when harry comes back ryan still might be a key player further forward and give us um if we want to play that kind of five two three you can play ryan as a kind of the the, the one on the left um he might even be able to play on the right as well but i think ryan hedges is kind of earmarked for that kind of role that you can cut in from the right so yeah, it's an interesting one. He had some balance, but also some questions as to how we're going to set up tactically. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting as well, though. I don't think this is necessarily the forefront of Mowbray's mind, but if we went back to 4 3 3, he could obviously fit in the left of midfield or the front three, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. And that's an interesting one as well, because obviously we. We you know, we're, we're speaking at the moment, it looks like Joe Rothwell's going to stay, but whether he plays or not, he's still. <laughs> a so. We, we could do with someone in the midfield three who can who can carry the ball forward in, in a similar sort of way that, that Rothwell can and link the defence and the attack. So that's possibly another role that they could mould him into. It's not something that we've seen that much of um, in his previous clubs. But, you know, we, you know, Mowbray's a very good developer of players. I think we've seen that with Rothwell and with quite a few of our younger players. So um, they might have seen something in there. and he's, I'm sure he's quite versatile. Obviously, as you say, he's only young. He's 22, is he? 22, yeah. 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 So, you know, someone who's, who's adaptable and obviously fit at the moment and can, and can hit the ground running, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Hit the ground running is a good point, isn't it? Because I think it's, 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 if he's our fifth signing in, um, it's he's one that you look at who's play championship this year uh can hit the ground running all possibility that he um could be in the squad for saturday's game at swansea which obviously will be quite interesting reception he'll get having played for their their rivals cardiff during the first half of the season yeah just a little bit on the defensive duels that i mentioned earlier um i've just got the data in front of me here is he actually the the issue with him is he doesn't get involved in defensive duels yeah. um it's not that he doesn't win them so actually he's got a very high win percentage but it's not something that has been part of his game. He doesn't really get involved in defensive duels, which again points to the fact that he's probably used previously further up the pitch. He actually, I've got the numbers here, he gets involved in 2.6 defensive duels per 90, which, you know, obviously two or three defensive duels in a match isn't very many at all. No, no. But he does win, he, he does win 70% of them. So um, maybe he isn't as, as hopeless defensively as that kind of stat would make out. It's just that he doesn't really get involved or hasn't done um, for Cardiff earlier in the season anyway. Yeah, absolutely. They, they had um, Morrison, Flynn, Nelson at the back to deal with all those duels, didn't they? So. Exactly. They, they definitely used him as more of an attacking outlet, which I think we saw when... I think he played against us, didn't he? I, I think he did, we, yeah, yeah. I know, we, I know we smashed them, but um, like at the, at the same time, I, I'm not sure if he was on corners as well. I think he might have been. There was a... Obviously, they were very threatening from set pieces, and that's probably helped his assist numbers and expected assist numbers as well. It always does if you're on set pieces. So, 
Um, that's another interesting one. Obviously, Rothwell is, is currently on our set pieces. If he's not playing, then we're going to need someone um, to go in laws. I think Buckley was taking free kicks on Saturday. So um, we probably need a left-footed option if, if Pickering isn't playing. Um, Giles can definitely do that as well. Yeah, and like you say, Cardiff did, I'm not sure if it was Giles who put the corner, but Morrison's goal was from a corner at Ewood Park, wasn't it? So it'd be quite interesting to, to see if that was him. Yeah, I can't remember. They, they were threatening from a lot of those. I remember a few, some in the first half as well from the right-hand side, left-footed delivery coming in. Um, yeah, so it was quite a lot of really positive things to this side. I can't remember to think of anything negative, to be honest. Um it's one that when, when it was mooted, I think a couple of days ago, I was definitely on board then and having looked into the data this morning and, and seen what he can provide, I'm even more excited about it now. And as you know, I mentioned in passing, being able to hit the ground running is really important for it. I can see him just being straight involved in the in the team. Um we've got are we playing on Saturday? Swansea is Swansea. Swansea on T V, isn't it? So yeah, I can see him being involved like kind of straight away, really. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be. Yeah, and that's that straightaway thing when even going back a few seasons to the 17-18 season when we bought Bell, Armstrong and Payne in, they were all sort of like ready to to, to, to run, weren't they? So it's a, a big plus as well. And like you say, I'm, I, when I first heard about it, I was, I was, oh yeah, that would definitely add add value. And interesting to know how long the discussions have been going on, but if it's um, picked up since Eden's injury, then all credit to the club for being able to get it over the line so quick. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's something that we've criticised the club for in the past and being quite slow in, in, in getting their business done. Um, I think we seem to be a lot more organised behind the scenes at the moment. And I don't have that kind of worry that I had even last January, um, that we that we kind of too slow and not reactive enough. I think we've, we've obviously prepared for this. We've said we were going to bring in players all through January. Um, so they've obviously had players in mind for this window and... and and this is a really good, a really positive addition, I think. Yeah, agree, absolutely. Well, thanks very much for your time, Andy. Um, thanks for watching, uh, Rovers fans. Nice, quick sort of 15, 16 minute video with plenty of positivity coming from that as well. So, as we say, keep tuned to the Rovers chat channels um, throughout the day. Um, whatever time you might see this, we're doing a live, live stream this evening from half past eight for the rest of the window. So, uh, do tune in, um, come share your thoughts with us and. Hopefully we'll all be um, celebrating a nice positive transfer window where we've seen clear improvement in the squad. Thanks for your time, Andy. No worries. Thanks, Jonathan. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods, including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.